Welcome to this screencast where I'm going to talk about multi-rider workloads using the HPE CSI driver for Kubernetes. My name is Michael Matson. I'm a tech marketing engineer with Hula Packet Enterprise. Before we dive in, I have a few slides I want to go through and talk a little bit about access modes for persistent volume claims on Kubernetes. The most common one is what we call a read-write once, or RWO. And that means you only have a single pod on a single host uh, in a Kubernetes namespace accessing any given volume at any given time. And this is uh, applicable to all traditional block storage using Fiber Channel, iSCSI, SAS, or InfiniBand protocols. The topic we're going to cover today is called read-write-many, or RWX. And it's dominantly uh, NFS and distributed storage, such as the HP Esmeral data fabric. And that means that you have multiple pods on multiple hosts accessing a external volume at any given time. And it could be, uh, it could be one pod or it could be hundreds of pods. It doesn't matter. They have all access to the same storage. Another mode is read only many or ROX, and it's more or less just a read only access variant of RWX. We have different access modes on persistent volume claims because applications have different needs. The most common pattern we see on Kubernetes today is that applications are deployed in a shared nothing distributed architecture. And that means that a, each individual pod have access to a, its own uh, volume and the application is scaled on the application level, right? So if, if you're running uh, MySQL or MariaDB in replicated mode, each uh, instance of the application is its own silo. The main node has its own uh, volume. It doesn't share data uh, on the storage level because data is replicated on application level. Uh, and that is down to the replica node itself, right? And that will then write to its own volume and does not share any infrastructure except on the application level. And another pattern that we see is popular uh, among legacy apps, but we can also see that uh, cloud native applications such as Pro Postgres and MySQL, they can also run in something that we call a single replica deployment, right? And that you have a single read write once persistent volume claim and using a single replica deployment. And, and this is sort of a simpler model to deploy an application, but you will um, then miss all the scale out features that Kubernetes provides essentially. And what we're gonna talk about today is what we would call scale distributed applications or applications that require shared storage that need to see the exact same representation of the storage at any given time. And it could be something like Jupyter Hub or you have a web server farm or you're running Kubeflow uh, that require a data lake that requires all the pods within a different uh, within a controller to access the exact same data at any given time in a read write many fashion the read only many uh, representation we can see that if you have a uh, caching web server that would uh, require read only access to a certain uh, representation of data you might have a ci cd pipeline that have read only access to production data as you don't want your build jobs to uh, to mess with your production data. Those, that's another use case for read-only many when you're just serving content and not actually changing any data. I'm gonna jump out to my terminal here and the end game is to deploy WordPress uh, and I'm gonna have the uh, WordPress application server running on a read-write-many uh, persistent volume claim and, and I will show you how to scale that uh, from a single replica to multiple replica, and you will see how that application server is then accessing uh, the same data. So in my storage class here, I have a few uh, vanilla parameters. I already have the HP CSI driver installed here. I, I'm not all the necessary components to provide read, write, one storage, but I, I wanna create this HP standard NFS storage class. I wanna tell the storage class that I wanna create NFS resources. Uh, I want to allow overrides so I can set a custom namespace because I want to show you the different components that gets deployed when I deploy a um, persistent volume claim that uses read write many. And I also want to set a very open file system permission mode. Going to create that. 
The next step, I'm going to create a persistent volume claim, uh, and I will reference this persistent volume claim from a Helm chart where I'll deploy WordPress. And I do the custom annotation here where I set the namespace to default. So I'm going to deploy everything in default namespace. Uh, I also set the access mode to read, write many, and I will call out the storage class that I just created, HB standard NFS. I'm going to create that. And now I'm going to inspect the deployment in my default namespace. And we can see here that we have an HB NFS and a long UUID about to be deployed. And I'm going to just going to watch that deployment come up and then we're going to do some further inspection here. So I can get the PVC uh, and I will see that I have a read write once uh, PVC that is uh, backing the NFS server. I also have a read write many uh, persistent volume claim and that is the one I just created as well. And uh, looking at all the different components that make up the NFS server, we can see that we have a service, uh, we have a pod, uh, and we also have the persistent volume claim. And there's also a config map in there as well. And what I want to do is kind of just lay out here for you what this actually looks like. The NFS server provisioner that we include with the HPE CSI driver deploys a, a number of different components. But if we start at the bottom here, we can see that we require a persistent volume from the HPE CSI driver. And it could be Nimble, it could be Primera, it could be 3 par or any future container storage provider for that matter. On that read write once PVC, we will attach a NFS server. The NFS server has a config map with a configuration file for the particular NFS server for that particular PVC within that namespace. And we also attach a service on top of that to make sure that the, uh, the read write many persistent volume claim will be able to mount that NFS server on the cluster. Uh, in this particular example, we're using HPE NFS as the namespace, that's the default namespace. And then when you call this uh, persistent volume claim, what happens within the pods within your application? Uh, so in this example here uh, that I'm showing on this slide is that you have a deployment with a three pod replica set that is running on three different uh, working nodes in this example. And the pod will essentially reference the read write many persistent volume claim and mount the read write ones NFS server across the network internally to Kubernetes. Back in my terminal, I want to deploy a Helm chart with WordPress. So I have a pre-baked configuration file here that I'm just going to provide a set of defaults. And the, the one that we kind of care the most about at this point is that I'm going to leverage the existing claim for the, uh, for the WordPress application server that we just created. I'm going to do a Helm install, give it a name, short name, and reference my values file. Away we go. We're going to watch the deployment coming up here. And then I'm going to exec into the um, WordPress application server and inspect the mount point. And we can see here that we have a mount point on slash bitnami WordPress, which is NFS version 4, and it references an internal cluster IP address. We can now see that the, um, the pod has an actual NFS mount point for that particular persistent volume claim. Before we scale the application, uh, I want to illustrate a few things here by logging into WordPress itself. Uh, I'm going to go into the apparent appearance of the, um, the theme and just add a string to the template here that allows us to see from which pod the, the content was served, right? So we'll be able to see that we Im immediately can leverage the, the additional replicas that we're going to scale the deployment with. So I'm just going to paste in a, a little PHP snippet here. There we go. Next, I'm going to add a post to um, my WordPress blog just to have something to look at when we uh, refresh the content. So I'm going to upload an image of a HB Nimble storage array and I'm going to give it a snazzy little frame, rounded, and add a title. Now when the post is published, uh, the image and the blog post, the, the blog post data, like the title and such, is being served from the, the backend database, while the image that I just uploaded is actually served from the application server. And that means that that file is now stored in our read-write-many persistent volume claim. 
So I'm going to jump back to my terminal here and do a simple uh, scale of my replica. And I want five replicas on that particular deployment and wait for that to roll out properly before we go back to the web GUI. All right, there we go. Next here, I'm just going to reload the browser. And we can now see that for each refresh, the content is now being served from a different pod, right? And we can see below that the image, uh, while we don't see the top of it, it's being served from the read write many persistent volume claim that each of those replicas have been deployed from. And this is how easy it is to deploy multi-writer workloads on Kubernetes using the HPE CSI driver. In the next screencast in this series, synchronize volume snapshots for distributed workloads using the HPE CSI driver for Kubernetes. We'll explore how to use this WordPress instance to create consistent snapshots across your application server and your backend database to uh, retain referential integrity between application components in a microservice architecture. Until then, take care.